Hi class, <clears throat> welcome back to um, virtual learning with Ms. Martin. Happy Friday. Um, I know you guys are really excited probably for the weekend and to enjoy whatever you have planned for the weekend. Um, maybe that's going outdoors and having some um, nice relaxation time with your family at a park, or maybe you're uh, planning on spending time playing some video games with your dad. Um, whatever you're doing, just remember to cherish the moments that you have with your family and your friends. That's what we're gonna be reading about today. So this past week, we've really been reading about things that and talking about and trying to figure out things that we would like to change with our, um, our world, things that we see and how we could be an activist or how we could help to make that change. Um, what I'd like you guys to think about today though is not necessarily about making change, but instead being aware and reflective of how you are currently feeling with um, what we've been dealing with the COVID virus. I know it's been a really rough time. I miss you guys so much. I really wish I could see all of you and I could give y'all all a big hug at my front door, give you a greeting. Um, that's why I really appreciate and am thankful that we have technology so I, I can at least see you through our Zoom calls on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So thank you to those who have been continuously coming on those and uh, talking to me. Um, but what I, let me uh, go back a little bit in my mind. So what we're going to be talking about today is just a reflection of this past like month. It's been a good solid month of us um, not at school and instead doing virtual learning. So we're going to read, actually, I wanted to continue on with poetry. We are going to be reading some poems about the virus and they're about poems to find hope how you guys can find hope in this time. So this is called Together in Solitude, The Challenge. It's by Jennifer Evanson. So first off, I'm gonna read through it. After I'm done reading through it, we are going to look at some particular lines and I'm gonna discuss those particular lines. Have you guys analyze this poem with me? Okay, so first I'm just gonna read it from beginning to the end throughout. If you're anxious, that all have been asked to stay home, take comfort in knowing you are not alone. Tonight at eight, wherever you are, gaze up at the sky and pick out a star. A moment alone or with people you love, we all share the beautiful sky high above. Take 30 seconds, be still in your mind. Reflect on a happy, most memorable time. The littlest things can give your hearts a lift. If we pause, take a moment, and cherish our gifts. Okay, so uh, we read it throughout. Now I want to go and analyze it a little bit and ask you guys some questions. Before I start analyzing it, I would like you guys to think of the essential question. Basically, my essential question is, what is the author's message? What are they telling us? How are, what are they telling us to do? Not physically, what are they telling us to do? But what are they telling us at this time to do with our mind? So when I, I read back up here, it says, if you're anxious, that we're all at home, it's okay. It says, take comfort. So when I see that comfort, I think of a comfy sweater. <laughs> I also think of, it's the opposite of anxious. Anxious is when you're really nervous and you're stressed out, like both of them together. You're nervous and you're stressed and you're just tense. You're really just like, oh my God, nothing is perfect. Uh, that's when you have a lot of anxiety. Comfort though is the opposite of that. So it's saying instead of being anxious about what's happening in our world, slow down and take comfort. Realize 
that others are feeling the same way. That's how you can start to feel some comfort is realizing that it's not just you having these feelings. Others are having these feelings too. It says, uh, tonight at eight, wherever you are, gaze up at the sky and pick out a star. So this is physically what it's saying for you to do. I think it's telling you to pick out a star. Why do you guys think it's telling us to do that, to pick out a star? Why would that be important at this time? Make an inference. I can infer the author's telling us to just look up at the sky because what I'm thinking is when I look up at the sky, I realize that there is so much in life. The, the sky is beautiful. It is covered by millions of stars. It makes me wonder what is out there. <laughs> it makes me also realize that I am very tiny. I'm just a small little human. When there's all these other things, there's so many humans in this world. There's so many things in this world that are beautiful. And when I focus on those things, when I focus on the beauty of the stars, and when I imagine the worlds beyond the one we are in, my mind just becomes at peace. In it. But at peace in a way that I'm, I'm curious, just like peacefully curious about what's happening around me. Then it goes right here. Our next stanza, our third one. A moment alone or with people you love, we all share the beautiful sky above. So this kind of, it goes with um, the stanza right before. And now makes me think, oh, that's what the sky means to her. That's why she was talking about the sky and picking out a star. Because we can all come together as a community. It is something that we all share with one another. We all share this beautiful sky above us. We all can see these stars above us, and we should cherish that and um, appreciate that, that we can all share one thing, the sky. I'm gonna read this next poem fully uh, through, and then we're gonna analyze a few lines of it. So I'm gonna, okay. It's called um, Poems to Help You Find Hope. It's by Sandra McShane. I don't know how I'm feeling. I think I feel all right. I'm busy doing nothing from morning until night. I don't know how I'm feeling. I left the house today. I went to do some shopping. I sang along the way. I don't know how I'm feeling. I gave the bags to mom. We smiled and laughed and she was fine. Then I went back home. I don't know how I'm feeling. Today I'm not sure. The numbers keep climbing. Will they find a cure? I don't know how I'm feeling. I just don't need this stuff. Some cake and chocolate? But boy, this is tough. I don't know how I'm feeling. When I stand and clap so loud, so grateful, happy, and so sad in the isolated crowd. I don't know how I'm feeling. When will that dream job come? I'm optimistic, hopeful, and luckier than some. I don't know how I'm feeling. I saw the news today, but only very briefly. Why won't it go away? I don't know how I'm feeling. I don't know if I'm sad. My friends and family, they're all fine. For that, I am so glad. I don't know how I'm feeling, but this I know is true. We're all in this together. It's me, them, and you. Do you know how you're feeling? You know that's okay. To sit and cry and wander, to want a better day. Let's just hold this feeling of love, of light, of hope. Let's relish all the quiet, be proud of how you cope. I don't know how I'm feeling. I think I want to cry. I don't. I make coffee and stare out at the sky. Today I got the feeling that soon this will be done. Our lives will change forever, but look up at the sun.
You know the deep down feeling of joy, of loss, of pain, the love, the sadness, and the hurt. You'll be okay again. One day, we'll get that feeling. Was all this even real? Hold on to that feeling. In time, we will all heal. Um, so, what I noticed throughout this whole poem is that she always started her stanzas with repeating something. What did she always repeat in each stanza? Why did she repeat that? I'd like you guys to think about that. Why did she repeat the same phrase over and over again as every stanza has it? What was the importance of it? Why was it being repeated? Well, I think I can make an inference. Right now, I think my inference, I can infer that our author, what she's trying to tell us, how she, what's going on in her mind and her heart and her soul is that she doesn't know how she's feeling. <laughs> she's being completely honest with us. She is a little bit confused because every day is a new day. Every day is a different day. And I, I get her and I understand that sometimes we might be feeling this way. We might be feeling sad or, um, just confused and maybe you're feeling or you might be the next day feeling overjoyed and confident and feeling the best like this is the most amazing day ever every day is a new day and that's kind of what i think she's trying to tell us is that every day we have different emotions and it's important to reflect on those emotions and to think about why we are having these emotions. Um, and she said, <clears throat> her family, they're all fine, for that she's glad. I think it's really important right now for us to have hope and happiness if your family is feeling healthy. If your family is not feeling healthy and they're feeling a little bit under the weather, I think that's really time to express how much you love them and how much you care for them. Um, because that's really what we should be doing at these time, or I don't wanna say that's what we should be doing, but that's what I think we should be doing, is getting closer with our family and talking with them and spending quality time with them, authentic quality time, talking and listening to them and having deep conversations with them and maybe playing some fun games with them. Um, that's my take on this. So you might, it says every day, it says right here in this stanza, do you know how you're feeling? I think our author, what do you think you're, why is the author asking us that? Do we know how we are feeling? I think they're wanting us to um, reflect at that point, reflect on kind of like a reflect. What I mean by that is like, it's like a mirror. Look at yourself, but look at your feelings. Try and understand what your feelings are doing these past couple of weeks and how you've been able to cope, that means handle them. What helps you handle them? Maybe talking to a friend helps you cope or handle those emotions. Maybe coming onto my Zoom call makes you help, uh, helps you cope and handle, maybe you're feeling kind of down because you haven't seen anyone. So coming on that Zoom call, you get to see people. You're really happy you get to see your classmates because you miss them. Maybe you're feeling really happy and um you express your happiness through playing sports it's just or you're feeling really angry and maybe instead of um hurting someone or yourself um you cope with your emotion of anger by drawing or you like to write a poem about this anger you're feeling i think it's really important to realize how we can best cope with certain emotions and it is okay to sit and it is okay to cry it's okay to wonder for a better day. Um, so that completes my uh, reading for today. I'd like you guys to, uh, right now, I'd like you guys to reflect on what you're feeling and you're gonna end up writing today what you feel in a poem on No Red Ink. So I'm feeling right now, I'm feeling nostalgic. That means missing. 
I am nostalgic because I am missing y'all. <laughs> I want olden times back then. I want like a month ago. <laughs> we're all, or two months ago, maybe three months ago. We're all together. That would be nice. But um, yeah, I miss you guys and I am hopeful for the future. That's also how I'm feeling. Have a great Friday and I hope you guys have an awesome weekend. Bye.